So how you doing everybody? This is Tim Shan from the uh, University of New Hampshire's Interoperability Laboratory. We're having a webinar today to talk about how to increase your SSD confidence in your products using uh, the NVMe test tools that are offered today by the UNH IOL uh, Data Center Group. As I said, my name is Tim Shan. I'm a development manager here at the lab. Uh, I've been here for about eight years and let's get started. Okay, so here's today's agenda, and I kind of lumped them into, uh, you know, two bolded each time, just because, you know, we'll hit each of them as we go through them. Um, as we go through, we'll just talk a little bit for those on the on the call or the webinar today who haven't actually dealt with the UNH IOL before, and then we'll talk about obviously what we're all here to talk about, which is the IOL Interact PC Edition software suite. So the UNH IOL, it's been around for about 30 plus years now, and it's located in the beautiful town of Durham, New Hampshire, in the beautiful state of New Hampshire. And we have been dealing with over 35 different areas of technology in all these years that we've been, we've been here as a business. Um, and we've been working with the NVMe.org for almost nine, 10 years now. Uh, and we've had a software product working with the test suites that they have been developing for about five to seven years. So we are about 140 people strong in the lab. We've got 20 to 25 full-time staff, such as myself. And then we also have about 120 to 30 graduate and undergraduate students at any one time. And they're our primary workforce. And for those who don't really understand or know the IOL. The IOL has been around for that long, but we have a dual mission statement. The first part is to obviously to be the biggest, baddest test facility that we have in the world. Um, but the second one is to educate and create professional engineers so that they can go out into the workplace and work for companies such as yours. So what is the IOL Interact PC Edition software? As I said, we've been working with the NVMe.org for the last number of years and they've chosen us as their primary developer of a set of software test suite that is based off of the test plans um, that they create out of the ICC integration committee in the NVMe.org. These are all based off of NVMe specifications that are all created and ratified by companies such as yours in industry. The Integration and Compliance Committee, ICC for short, and its member you know, companies do create these test plans. They vote on it. They go through a process in order to make sure that everybody agrees with the contents of them all. And then once they're actually vetted out in that sense, then we actually go ahead, create the software that we can use to actually you know, certify that your products, your NVMe products, are actually compliant to those specifications. So let's talk about the release schedule that we have for the IOL Interact. So the IOL Interact right now, we just are in IOL Interact version 11 right now. We just had a plug fest back in July of this summer. And that was primarily working with the 1.3 specification, test plan specification that came out of NVMe.org. And the next one that we'll be doing, which will be coming up this fall, is the Interact 12.0 version. This is gonna be our first foray into the 1.4 space, the version 1.4, which is the specification coming out of nvme.org. And we're looking at doing this for some of the plug fests that'll be coming up here in the next couple of months. We'll be releasing the software here shortly in the next week or two, week or two for the, the September release that will be used at that next plug fest. And then the, the you know, in, into the future is gonna be working with Interact uh, version 13, which would be a test spec that'll come out, which this is definitely dealing with all the issues that'll be coming out in the 1.4 spec uh, out of nvme.org. And we're talking springtime of 2020. So probably somewhere in the order of, you know, nine months from now, if not a little bit longer. So the test plans themselves, there are three primarily that we deal with when we're actually testing out SSD products. 
Um, you have the base specification, which is all the conformance testing that we actually perform that the IOL Interact PC Edition is based on. And we also have the NVMe Interop, which is again, as you can imagine, we're plugging your SSD products into different hosts to make sure that they work correctly. And then we also, I put in the MI specification here because that's something also that we do with SSD is make sure that they can conform to that. Now you can see by the slide that there's a version 11 and a version 12, although the first one says two, sorry about that. Uh, it should be 12 and really what these are is because we're in that area of uh, twice a year where we do plug fest that we need to be able to support the older version, which is version 11. And then also we launched the new version, which is going to be version 12. So right now we're conforming device. We, we test out to make sure devices are conforming to the 11.0 specification, but we're also going to release that 12 software, like I said, in about a week from now. And that will be the, once the plug fest um, happens, which would be in early November of this year, that's the actual plug fest where we'll be introducing the, the uh, version 12 software and using that to actually perform the conformance. So at this point, there will be a, a poll that should pop up on your screen. And it's just uh, some information that we're looking at to gain from you who are going to be on this call. And if you could fill that out, that would be great. Um, it's definitely going to give us a little bit of information about what you'd like to see in terms of licensing and the preferred model for that. So I'll just keep talking while you fill that out. Now there are, in the actual test specification, these are all the different groups that are actually performed for testing. Um, each one of these, this is, these are just the high level group names themselves. Um, but really in each one of these test groups, there are anywhere from one to almost 20 different test cases in each one of these. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of different ones that, that, that are taken into account, not only administrative, but also queue management, uh, different things like your power state transitions. These are all you know, important features. Now, a lot of the tests that you'll see in there, I believe there's somewhere in the order of 150 or so that are actually mandatory for SSD devices. Uh, there are also FYI uh, test cases, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But for the most case, for the most part, these there's a huge amount of tests in this test plan, but again, the mandatory ones are the only ones required in order to actually comply and make it onto the integrators list that we have with nvme.org. So one of the reasons why we're having this webinar is to try to get you familiar with the actual product itself, Interact but also to tell you how we actually have it deployed right now out in industry. And there are three different use cases that we see right now of customers and how they're using the product. The first one would be, as I just mentioned a little bit ago, the actual NVMe.org's integrators list. You know, the IOL works closely with NVMe.org and the ICC committee specifically in order to create the test plans with all the companies involved in NVMe.org. And then we come up with this software, the IOL Interact. There's the PC edition. Um, that's the one we're focused on for this webinar. And the whole idea is that as long as your product can comply or pass all of the mandatory tests that are in that particular test plan, then you'd be able to actually list your product on the integrators list. And you'd be able to use this as a, as a great sales tool or even you know, a marketing tool to use. It also gives your customers a good feeling for, you know, where your device is, that it can actually conform or is compliant to a certain level of, of test plan that is put out by the NVMe.org. Now, obviously this is an SSD presentation, so it's really the leftmost box um, that has the 196 products that are listed. That's the one that you'd be focused on. But I also put on the MI, which is the management interface, integrators list, and also the NVMe OF integrators list just so that you could all see how many products there are right now on each one of these. Now, like I said, this is definitely a great tool to be used by you, the customer, our customer, the IOL's customer, to use with your customers to show them how your, your product actually stacks up in terms of the testing that the NVMe.org would like to see it, it actually comply to. Um, in order to actually get onto the, uh, the list itself, you'd have to pass, like I said, the actual mandatory tests that are in the conformance test plan. And then there's also an interop piece 
where you'd have to make sure that your SSD product would actually work within five out of six different kinds of hosts. And we have those listed on our website and the IOL's website. And as, as long as you could pass and it would work uh, on five out of those six different hosts, you know, you'd be able to do, be able to make it onto the integrators list with the conformance tests also all passing. Now there are a number of tests. I'm not going to talk too much about the interop testing, but there are a number of tests in there. You're going to do uh, hot swaps. You're going to do reboot tests. You're going to do different IO tests and things like that. Um, and that's pretty much all I just wanted to say about that. So use, that was the end of use case one. So it's to get on the integrators list. Use case two is, a, is one that we're seeing definitely an uptick in, and it's probably the largest uh, growing use case that we see right now and have seen in the last year and a half. And this is where companies such as yourselves actually use the IOL Interact, Interact product as part of your actual development process in your company. It's something that gets used early on in the product cycle and used throughout the product cycle to make sure that your, your device is conforming to the actual NVMe uh, specifications and also to make sure that it doesn't change when changes are made in your product. This is definitely something where baselining of the initial product and then making sure that it, you're able to run those tests all throughout your development process and nothing radical changes because as we all know, when you make a change in one spot, it does affect sometimes something else that might not even seem remotely related, but it is. And if it changes that, you'd be able to run your, the actual IOL Interact tool to make sure that, that that actually is okay and doesn't affect anything else. I know here in the IOL, we use it. We definitely have it running in a nightly fashion. We've got an auto runner and that'll be coming out in our next release in the 12 release and here in about a week where you're able to actually have the running, uh, automatic running happening overnight so that you can come in and actually check the results out each morning and make sure that the, and do comparisons to make sure that there are no changes. So what we do here at the IOL is we check out code every day and we do a nightly run and any changes that go into the actual code base and everything. And we have a couple of uh, golden modules or SSD, NVMe SSD modules that we use as our, as our test subject. And we would check out the code every night. We'd make sure that it runs and then we'd make sure we compare the results, you know, every morning to make that, to make sure that there were no changes or any adverse effects to any of the code changes that we've made. And this seems to be, like I said, something that, you know, companies are picking up on greatly right now because it's a great tool to run in that kind of environment. And the features that we're putting in right now can give you that ability to do that. So again, you're able to get, uh, you know, the latest tools. Um, you're able to realize that your product is, is going in the right direction and is in the, uh, in the best interest of, of the direction that you're going in. Um, and then of course, the biggest thing is making sure that you find as many problems as you can in your product, you know, before it actually hits the, uh, the open market and your, and your customers find those issues. So again, use case two embedded, it has the IOL interact tool embedded into, you know, development processes within, you know, manufacturing companies. The third, the, the third uh, use case that I'd bring up today is, is with the IOL Interact tool working in a data center. This is definitely one, again, that we've seen probably in the last six to nine months. Uh, we've got a number of customers that use this in large data centers. And this is one where they use it, again, to baseline the actual products, the NVMe uh, modules that they have within their, their actual data center. They, have a, they create a baseline of what it is um, and how they're working. And then anytime there's any kind of a change or even on a periodic basis, they'd run the IOL Interact tool to make sure that everything is still functioning as desired, or at least as how the, uh, the baseline that was taken, the snapshot in time looked. Now, again, this is something that they can do automatically. You can set it off to run nightly. Same kind of uh, testing that's going to happen here. Um, and it really gives them the ability to, to understand if something within their data center is changing. So data centers are definitely a big uptick that are happening too right now. Probably not as big as the, uh, the development process, but it's one that we're seeing coming on strong right now in the last few months. So those are the three use cases. Uh, it's the integrators list, 
it's the actually using the IOL interact tool to get onto the integrators list. Then you would use the interact tool also as part of your development process. And then the third one is to use it as in your data center to make sure that your data center is functioning as you wish it to be. So, you know, you'd say, okay, we've got this interact tool, but what are some of the areas? And I figured I'd just list out a couple of them here. Um, these are just some of the, you know, issues that we've seen in the last few months. Um, you know, we've had different tests where we do a write, first one would be a write uncorrectable with, with a large data that would be even larger than the, you know, the max data transfer size that we'd have set. And, but it wouldn't really matter because you shouldn't be looking at the max data. So we definitely had a couple of customers who ran into that problem. You know, FIDs or FIDs that were, you know, savable but not changeable. Don't know why we'd run into this, but we did. And uh, we've had a couple of these instances. Obviously, statuses are something that changes between different versions of NVMe. You know, going from 1.2, 1.3 to 1.4, um, you know, status changes uh, will happen. And typically, this is definitely a big area that we want to make sure are done correctly because obviously that's something that the NVMe.org and the member companies are making those changes for specific reasons. And we wanna make sure that they're, you know, all the devices are compliant to that. Again, making sure compliance to the mandatory tests. And also, as I mentioned a second ago, compliance to the actual versions of the specs that came out. There are different tests that come out or different changes that happen to the same test um, between say 1.3 and a 1.4 version of the specification. And because of those changes, we wanna make sure that your devices would actually adhere or comply to those changes also. And then the last one we had was just doing a uh, device self-test with an NI, uh, a name, namespace ID of, of zero, which obviously is the controller. Um, and there could be different you know, testing that could happen there. But again, these five are just ones that I threw out there just so that you can see. These are just some of the areas uh, or some of the issues that we've had happen in the last couple of few months that I figured I'd just throw out so you could have an example of, okay, what does the tool actually capture and what is it it can do for you? So now I'd like to talk a little bit about you know, future plans and then I have a, a brief demo which just kind of goes over the, uh, the GUI that we have for the IOL Interact PC Edition product. Um, and let's move on to that. So the next release, as I said already a couple of times, is version 12. And the IOL Interact version 12 will be, is already out in terms of the actual test plan. If you look on the IOL website and you go under the NVMe test uh, group on the website, you'll see that, and then go under test plans, you'll see that there are already red line tests plans that are out there, as well as the test plan just in regular black print. The red line's a great one because you can see what's changed because it's obviously all in red. And if you take a look at this slide, you can see that there are 26 new tests uh, that come out. Now, those tests that typically come out are all gonna be just FYI, right? They, are not, they do not come out mandatory because the ICC definitely wants to make sure that everybody's, because this is a cutting edge um, uh, product as well as a cutting edge you know, technology that you're putting into your products. And these new features definitely come out as FYI so that we can gauge the, the level of interest, but also the level of actual technical you know, prowess that each of your products has in each of these new tests before making it mandatory. And the groups that you can see right there, you know, the 26 new tests are in, those are in the admin command, command set, the NVMe command set, the NV, NVMe features, um, group seven is the reservations and nine is the uh, namespace management. So those are what you're gonna see uh, a lot of the new tests in. And I, the way I looked at it, there was probably two to three tests in, in each one of those for new tests. And then we had five test cases that actually changed status. So this means typically that they would go from an FYI to mandatory. So take a close look at that um, because when we come in to do the next plug fest, which will be happening, like I said, in, in early, early November, that's gonna be something that we're going to be testing with is this new uh, 12.0 version of the Interact tool, but also it's based upon the actual version 12 of the actual conformance test plan from the uh, nvme.org. So just to give you an idea of, of some of the upcoming events, you know, we were gonna have a uh, NVMe OF tools webinar, which will be happening uh, in a couple of weeks here on September 10th. And that's gonna be talking about the IOL Interact tool with respect to fabrics. 
And that's definitely a new feature that's come out in the last year or two from NVMe.org is NVMe over fabrics. And this right now, our tool runs over Rocky. It also runs over TCP as well as fiber channel. So the OF tool that we have can actually give you the conformance and compliance testing that you require for your product on each of those different transports. And we're gonna go over that, like I said, on September 10th. It'll be a similar short webinar as we're having today, just to kind of give you a taste for it. There's also demos available and things like that that you can go online. The plug fest that uh, we'll also have in November, but first what we usually do is have a webinar before that to give everybody a chance to understand what we'll be doing at the actual, actual plug fest, um, the test plan and go over and make sure that we've got any of your concerns and everything um, addressed so that we can come into the actual November 4th NVMe OF plug fest, which is the third one down and we can actually have a great event and make sure we do a lot of testing. In the last two or three plug fests for fabrics that we've had for NVMe OF is we've been doing a lot of proof of concept or even extra testing, doing DCB testing, uh, congestion notification and things like this. And it's definitely been uh, well received by everybody who attends uh, because obviously in order to do some of the protocols such as Rocky, it is um, you know, re requires to have DCB settings and things like that in your actual fabric. And then on the 11th of November, we'll do the uh, NVMe SSD and MI plug fest. And then lastly, we're looking at doing an actual SSD and MI and an, and an MI uh, plug fest in Asia. So this is going to be probably either a version 12 or 13 uh, of, of the actual software. More than likely, it'll be 12. And this is going to be in Asia sometime in mid-January of 2020. So keep your ears and eyes open because that, that'll be coming up shortly. And that's the, uh, at least the futures of what's coming up. Now there are other things that'll be coming out of ICC for those of you who actually don't attend the calls that happen every other Tuesdays. Uh, I think it's one or two o'clock Eastern time. Uh, you can definitely touch base with uh, nvme.org and get on those calls if you'd like. But there's also further roadmaps coming out. There are events happening, like we're gonna be having version 13 that'll happen and the plug fest will probably happen next summer time frame or late spring summer time frame, and that'll be for version 13 of the IOL Interact as well as the test plans. And then of course, we also call the, the plug fest 13 also, so it's easy enough to follow that way. So as well as they also have plans right now, they're starting to work on some of the technical proposals and everything out of the ICC, the NVMe ICC, um, for issues that are gonna be happening a year from now for plug fest 14 and test plan 14, and dealing with different subject matter or technical issues in nvme.org there. So those are kind of the, some of the futures that'll be happening and uh, they look to be pretty exciting. So, and then the last piece that I can do is just talk you through the product itself. So this is a depiction of an already installed NVMe uh, Interact folder on a Linux system. And this is just the manage directory. You've got the uh, install and run GUI, which actually launches the GUI application we have. And then the other big piece that you have in there is the actual license file itself. Obviously you need to get a license for the product in order to make it run. And it's important to do that. We'll then launch the actual GUI from the command line and it will come up. Now you can run some of the scripts command line, but a lot of times there, most of our customers run it from the GUI. Um, usually the nightly tools and everything like that will be run from the command line. We do uh, base our product based off of uh, NVMe CLI 1.7, as you just saw from the screen, as well as there is a TNVMe, DNVMe uh, element to it. So you've got in the middle, all the buttons that we have to run or cancel a run, you've got a readme. Uh, the products you have on the right hand side, you'd have the actual log window and everything. And then back over onto the left, you've got all of the file and edit uh, menus that pull down menus that can do roughly the same thing as our buttons do. And then in the leftmost panel, you'd have the tests that we can actually, you know, choose from. You can either choose a whole group, such as I just did right there with group one, or I can come in and select an individual case. Once I selected an individual case or as many of the test cases as I want here, and you can see there are, there are quite a few of them. Group one has, I think, somewhere in the order of 19. You'd select it and then hit run. And on the right-hand side, in the right-hand panel, you'd see that you'd have the actual test number, the date that it was run. You'd see the command that was used to run it. You'd see the device it was run against, the version of the code we ran, if it passed, 
Um, and then down below, you'd see again, if it was a, if you were running more than one test, you would have seen more than one test here, either a pass, fail, skip, or just an informative test. And of course, down at the bottom, we give you the logs. Now, if you go back over to the center of the screen, you've got a couple more buttons that I didn't go over yet. And that would be the readme where you could get more information. Or if you were to display the log itself, you would actually hit the button, it would pop up, I'd select the actual case I did, did uh, actually just run. And this would now give you a more detailed information dump of what it is we actually did and what are the values we got back from your product during that and what created it as a, as a pass or fail scenario. Or I could go back and actually hit the display results again to show you an overview of actually all the tests that ran. Because again, I only ran one for this demo purpose, but you could have selected all you know, 150. Now, of course, they're all run based off of on, uh, from or against that NVMe.0 uh, device. Now, down on the footer, you'd have the, the, the actual status bar and the amount of time. You'd also have the version of code that we've pulled down um, and, and what version of the actual test plan that we run. And then, of course, most importantly, when your license expires, because once that expires, you're not going to be able to run it anymore. So... That just gives you a, a brief overview of how the product runs and everything. Um, it runs well, it's a good product that way. Um, and it's, it's relatively simple to use. And I look for any questions that you might have. And then I guess lastly, what I'd like to say is, so how do you get the product? You know, I've showed you, you know, what it's based off of, how it's built, uh, what, our, what our roadmap is today, what our futures are. I gave you a brief demo of the product itself, but maybe you want to get it as, uh, you know, the product yourself and try it out. So you can request a demo license. And if you go onto the IOL website, as you can see from the picture on the right-hand side, you can see that you can make a request uh, to get any of the license packages that we have, the NVMe PC edition for PCI and SSD testing, or any of the OF, NVMe OF uh, products also for fiber channel TCP or Rocky. And we also have a Teledyne LaCroix product that actually uh, handles a couple of our test cases. So again, the demo version that you can get will be a subset. It'll run a subset of the, uh, all of those tests that I, you just saw on the, on the demonstration itself. But it gives you, will give you a good idea. I think we run one test in each one of the groups so you can get an idea of, of how they would each work and how they will uh, depict the actual information that we're getting from your products. Now, of course, you might have some questions or, or, or something about the testing that we do. So you can obviously send it to the NVMe lab at iol.unh.edu. This is a global mail that goes out to everybody in our data center group here at the IOL. And we'll obviously answer it back, you know, as quickly as we can. And if you looked on to the, uh, on the right-hand picture again, that has the web page on it, in the upper right, you have right next to contact us, you have the My IOL. If there was any kind of an issue or bug that was in your product um, that you're seeing, then you would go into my OL, my IOL, and you'd be able to actually um, add that issue in there. And then we would, you know, if it is an issue, we would add it into the next the next uh, release product and cycle. Okay, so at this point, you know, keeping it short and sweet, um, that is the product in a nutshell. Uh, how it works, where you can get it how you can communicate with us. And again, if you have any other, you know, questions or, or, you know, concerns that you'd like to share with us, you know, please let us know. And at this point, I'm going to take a look to see what we have for any questions. So now would be the time to add them in if you have any. So I've got one already. And it's just asking about, um, Let's see, what are the, explain what a plug fest is and details on what you'll be testing. So a plug fest is typically where we're coming in to perform the testing of people's devices to make sure that they can actually pass all of the conformance testing and the conformance test plans, as well as the interrupt test plans. And what happens is if you're able to pass all the mandatory tests in the conformance test plans, as well as the uh, tests that are in the interrupt test plans. And again, for an SSD product, you need to pass on, for interrupt, you need to pass uh, five out of six hosts. And on the conformance, you must pass all the mandatory tests. Then your product would be able to be listed on the actual integrators list, which is listed on the IOL's web, web page. 
So that's the testing that you'll be doing, both interop and conformance. And then, as I mentioned uh, a little bit on the fabrics event, when we do that plug fest, we also take a little bit of extra time. And if there's other testing that the participants of the plug fest would like to see, then we're, we, we definitely want to make sure we can do that and allocate enough time to do that so that we can get some good results there. Okay, I do have a, another, I have one question that's asking about, is Wireshark required? So no, Wireshark is not required, but there is um, a feature that we just put in for this release that is going to launch Wireshark in the case of say Rocky or TCP, uh, which are over ethernet. And we're doing this just for ease of use for our customers so that they'd be able to, uh, you know, have Wireshark. As long as you have it installed on your system and you put into the actual product where it's located and things, we'll launch that and actually, you know, perform traces so that you can then capture it and see what's going on. Okay, I've got another one. Uh, another question we have is, can you extend the UNHIOL tests? Can we use the existing test and programmatically extend it, say using Python from exposed APIs? Uh, at this time, no. Uh, we are looking at exposing our APIs, like I said, through the auto run feature that we have in order to allow them to, uh, for you to automate your testing on a nightly basis or, or just in general to automate it so that you can set it and, and it runs through all the testing. Um, but that's the way it's happening today. So that would be a, a, actually a good feature, you know, to expose more APIs that way. That would definitely be a good feature. And if there are any specific areas that you'd like to see um, to do that, to extend those, uh, I'd be interested in hearing and we can talk more about those. So please get in touch with us. So what kernel do we use? Uh, right now we're 4.10 um, and you could go on our website and see what those are. Um, we're looking at actually doing an upgrade probably here in the next month or two, not this next release that's coming out, but probably the one shortly thereafter, um, where we're going to be bringing the whole product up to the latest and greatest kernels that are, that are being, you know, deployed out in industry. So that's something that, you know, we're looking at, at, at doing. We realize that we've had this request from a couple of customers in the past, and we're definitely working towards that. So we'll keep you all in, you know, aware of that and what the timing is for that. Okay, I've got another one, another question that says, what is your release cycle and, and development process? So we are contractually obligated with the NVMe.org, since this is the official tool used by NVMe.org to perform the compliance testing, um, to release our software for a, the, the next plug fest, at least two months before the plug fest. We do this such that, um, since these are new features and a lot of times they're not even implemented in fully in products yet, um, we need to make sure that they can work with the actual products of the customers before the plug fest so that when you come to the plug fest you're able to perform all the testing that you need and want and make sure that it that it works correctly so we have two major releases and that's usually two months before each one of those plug fests at this point we've been doing a plug fest every fall and then one in the summer time frame or late spring early summer um, and I think those are still going to be happening in the same in the same time frames. So those are two major ones. But then what we try to do is release uh, minor releases uh, about every four to six weeks in between those major releases. And typically those releases will have those minor releases will have bug fixes or anything that we've found that we want to change around or, or modify. Or maybe if there's something in the in some kind of ECN that comes out. Um, from the NVMe ICC committee, then we would actually add those in as a minor, you know, fix also. So just to give you also a little bit more insight, we use an agile process here at the lab. Um, we're trying to, again, like I said, dual mission of the IOL is to educate the next generation of engineers and also allow them to use the latest and greatest tools that are out there. They're all using uh, JIRA, uh, Git, Bitbucket, uh, and we use an agile process to make sure that, you know, not only the development happens in a, in a rapid prototype fashion where they can, you know, perform, you know, all the development they need to do in, in the right 
frame of, of mind and everything, but also the test process too. We definitely want to make sure that we add enough test time in to make sure that this product, you know, gets enough air time. Uh, so I just got another question that says, can we use kernel 5.x, which includes the NVMe TCP modules? So the fabrics is a little bit more, you know, I'm really, the, this webinar was more for the SSD. So I've been kind of talking that way more so than anything, but yes, in terms of the fabrics, like the actual, you know, TCP or Rocky um, products that we have, those are actually running on the latest and greatest kernels. So it's really the PCI one that we're trying to get up to, to the speed of the latest kernel. So yes, that one would. Okay. And then I've got one more here that just popped. Um, they're just asking what, what, what types of customers are you working with? So, you know, I, I think that's what we were trying to hit when we talked about the use cases. Um, you know, we're using, you know, use case one is kind of, you know, getting on the integrators list and everything. That's more for the manufacturers of the products and everything. And they are using it to make sure that they can sell their products to various, you know, large scale data centers and, or, or hyperscalers or things like this that would want to know that their products can meet a certain criteria. Um, so that would be the first group of, of customers that we have when, you know, that we deal with here at the IOL with actually selling our product to them. And then the, the second one would be, you know, to data centers themselves. And yeah, so there's definitely, you know, a group um, that we do. And then the third one is obviously, you know, all these companies, the manufacturers using it, not only to get on the integrators list, but also to, you know, embed it into their development process to make sure that it, you know, their product comes out and is in good shape by the time it, you know, comes out and hits the actual market. Okay. Uh, I think that's about all the questions. I don't know. We we'll, can wait a second longer if somebody else has any other questions. But if, if you don't, then ultimately you can send a mail to the nvme.org. I mean, sorry, the nvme lab at iol.unh.edu. And we'd be happy to answer any of your questions, further questions. You know, if you'd like to see a demo, you could go to the links. This presentation will be posted. It will go up on YouTube. And so you'd be able to see it there. All the links would be available and things like that you could get to. So um, with that, I'd say thank you very much for coming today. Uh, I hope you got something out of this, but if you still have questions or anything, please reach out, talk to us. Um, or if you have any other feature requests, such as you know exposing the APIs that we just had, that would, those are great. And we'd love to make this a product that you know, you'll use uh, in order to make your products better. Because ultimately that's, that's what we're here for. So thank you very much. This is Tim Sheehan from the IOL and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye now.